Today, I want to talk to you about increasing your faith. One day, a man was mountain climbing, but he slipped and began to fall over a cliff. Right before he went over the edge, he grabbed the trunk of a small tree and hung there for dear life. He looked up and cried out, help, is anybody up there? Suddenly, a voice spoke from heaven and said, yes, it's the Lord. The man said, Lord, can you help me? And God said, it depends. Do you believe in me? The man said, yes, Lord, I believe. God said, well, if you believe, then let go of the tree. Then the man cried out, is anybody else up there? Do you believe? Are you a believer? Do you live by faith? What do you believe in? Who do you believe? Do you know that God created you with a gift of faith? Now, many people think they don't have faith or they say they don't live by faith, but everybody has the gift of faith. The scripture says in Romans 12, verse 3, that God has given to every person a measure of faith. And God gave you that measure of faith when you're born. But faith is dynamic. It can grow and develop. It can increase or decrease. It can become stronger or weaker. It can be used or lay dormant. One day, the disciples of Jesus felt the need to have more faith. And so we hear them say to the Lord, Lord, increase our faith. That's found in Luke 17, verse 5. Lord, increase our faith. Would you whisper that prayer right now? Lord, increase my faith. The word increase means to become greater, to make something greater in size, amount, degree, and intensity. They were saying, Lord, increase the size, the amount, the degree, the intensity of our faith. Now, why did they ask Jesus to increase their faith? Why do you and I need to ask the Lord to increase our faith? First of all, because Jesus modeled great faith. They saw the connection in Jesus' life between his faith in God, who he always called his father. He never thought of God in abstract terms. He always referred to God as his father, a very personal relationship. They saw the connection between Jesus' faith in his father, in God, in the power of his life, the peace that he had, the joy that he had. They saw in his very life that he lived by faith and they wanted to be more like him. So they said, Lord, increase our faith. When Jesus fed the multitude, the only miracle found in all four gospels in the New Testament, when he got the loaves and the fish from the boy that had them, the Bible says in the gospels that he looked up to heaven and he gave thanks and he began to break the bread and a miracle took place. They saw that the first thing Jesus always did in a crisis was look up to heaven and to trust God. One night, the disciples were caught in the Sea of Galilee in a raging storm. Jesus was in the lower part of the boat, sound asleep, exhausted perhaps from all the ministry and the work that he'd been, sound asleep in the middle of a storm that frightened these men who were experienced sailors. They came and they woke Jesus up. They said, Master, don't you care if we drown? And Jesus stood on the boat. And the Bible says he rebuked the winds and the waves and said, peace be still. And there was a great calm. They saw that when Jesus faced a crisis, he didn't panic, but that he exercised his faith. When toward the end of his ministry, he arrived at the home of Lazarus, his good friend who had died, and he'd gotten the news that he had died. And he arrived four days later after his death. And People were in mourning. His sisters, Martha and Mary, were in mourning. Martha was angry at God, and she was upset with Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, this would have never happened. It's where Jesus stood at the tomb of his closest friend, and he wept. He felt the grief. But he didn't end there. He told him to move that stone away. And the Bible says that he prayed. And he said, Father... I know that you've heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of those who are here so that they may believe that you sent me. Then he said, Lazarus, come forth. That's interesting, Jesus said. 
in his prayer, Lord, I know that you always hear me. Well, the disciples saw so many times when Jesus faced a great crisis that he never panicked, that he had faith. We're in a crisis right now, a pandemic, a health crisis, and so many people are panicking. And unfortunately, people in politics and the news and so many people are making people panic. But you need to face the crisis with faith. You need to increase your faith. And Jesus didn't just model faith, but he motivated faith. He was always encouraging people, as I am you today, to increase their faith, to exercise their faith, to use their faith. I'm encouraging, I'm challenging you not to give way to fear, not to allow yourself to panic. But there's a greater way to live. There's a more victorious way to live, and that is the way of faith in God. And Jesus was always motivating faith. What if you could hear Jesus say to you personally today what he often said to his disciples and said in crowds teaching? Matthew 17, 20, Jesus said, I'll tell you the truth. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, when the disciples said, Lord, who can possibly be saved? He said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. In Matthew 21, verse 22, Jesus said, if you believe everything you ask for in prayer, you will receive. When he ministered to a man's son who was demonized, he told him in Mark 9 and 23, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes. In Mark eleven twenty two, he told his disciples, have faith in God. Let those words sink in from Jesus to you today. Have faith in God. In Mark eleven twenty four, he went on to tell them, whatever you ask for in prayer, believing you will receive. You will receive. In John 14 and 12, he said, I'll tell you the truth. If anyone has faith in me, the works that I do shall he also do, and greater things than these shall he do, because I'm going to my Father. In John 15, verse 7, Jesus said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you can ask for whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. And Jesus was inspiring people to believe. Barbie's reading the book of Revelation every day. She told me just the other day, thinking about the times we're living in and what God predicts about the future of the world and the return of Christ. And she said to me, did you know in those letters to the seven churches, she said, I was reading those again today. Every time Jesus ends every message to each of the churches and he says, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches today. And what is Jesus saying to the church today in the middle of a pandemic? Jesus is saying one message to his people, have faith in God. When a pandemic rises, have faith in God. When politics fail, have faith in God. When economies are unstable, have faith in God. When storms come in your life, have faith in God. When problems arise, have faith in God. This is the victory that overcomes the world, the scripture says, even our faith. Whatever you're facing today in your own life, remember what the scripture says about the power of God's grace in your life. Greater is he who's in you than he that is in the world. Jesus' message to his people today is the same message he gave his disciples. Have faith in God. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today in this crisis. Have faith in God. Our desire is the same desire of the disciples. Increase our faith. Don't you feel the need to have your faith increase? Don't you feel the need to trust God more fully and completely in your life? Such joy and peace and confidence comes when you can live by faith and not by sight. Well, the question is, how can our faith, how can you increase your faith? What can you do? Well, there are three ways that faith increases. First of all, God can increase your faith, and they knew that. So they came to Jesus, the Son of God, and said, Lord, increase our faith. They knew they couldn't do that by themselves. They needed divine help. And if you will pray for God to increase your faith, God, by the power of the Spirit, will cause your faith to grow. Now, how does God 
increase our faith. Well, there are many things that God does as he works in our lives, but I want to point out one way that God increases your faith. He will put you in a situation in which you will feel that you don't have enough to handle. You'll feel like you're in over your head. You may be in a problem, and you don't have the ability to solve it. You've done everything you know to do, but you come up short. The Lord may lead you into a position, a job, a ministry, a challenge, an opportunity. And yet you feel like, you know, I'm not really qualified for this. I don't know if I have what it takes for this. I'm very uncomfortable in this situation. God will put you in a situation where you are required to exercise faith. Because if you don't do it by faith, it won't get done. He'll put you in a situation that'll test your human limitations so that you now have to depend upon him. And that's when you see the miracle and the glory and the power of God break into life. Think about Abraham in the Old Testament, the great man of faith. He's always lifted up all through the scripture. Even the New Testament has the great example of faith. God gave him a great promise, but then listen to Genesis 22, verse 1. Three words. God tested Abraham. Think about that. God tested Abraham. The reason Abraham was a great man of faith and an inspiring example to all of us is because God tested Abraham. He put him in a situation where the only thing to do was to trust God. That was when he had him offer his son and God miraculously provided. And Abraham learned that God, he said, is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. How, why did he know that? Why did he learn that, that God was his provider? Because God put him in a situation where he had to live it and prove it and experience it. And he could really tell us, you know, when you're in a situation where you don't know where the provision's coming from, God will provide. Abraham could say it because he knew it, because he lived it. Jesus often put his disciples in situations where it tested their limitation. They had to depend upon him. When he fed the multitude, the feeding of the 5,000, that's an interesting, you find it in all four Gospels. But in Matthew 14, that's an interesting chapter of what took place as Jesus was teaching large crowds of people. He healed the sick, and the people had been traveling and following him for days. And the disciples came to Jesus and said, the people, the crowds, they're hungry, they're tired. And they said, Jesus, send them away so they can go get something to eat. And Jesus said to them, you give them something to eat. They said, we don't have anything. Why did he tell them, 12 men, to feed 5,000 people? He put them in a situation where they had to believe God for something great. And then he said, go and see. And that's when they found the five loaves and the two fish and the young boy that had them. And Jesus broke the bread and fed the multitude that day. And those disciples, when it was all over and the crowd dispersed, they gathered 12 basketfuls of food, one for each of the disciples, so they would realize when you're in a situation where you don't think there's an answer, there is an answer. When you face a problem you don't think can be solved, it can be solved. When you face something you say it's impossible, it's not impossible. When you walk by faith, you'll see the extraordinary power of God in your life. Lord, increase our faith. Only God can increase faith. When Barbie and I started in ministry as pastors, we were youth pastors for a couple of years, and then we started our first church. It was a church that had gotten started outside of Atlanta in Athens, Georgia, and they had about 40 people, and the pastor left, and people got, everybody left the church except just three families. They had a little piece of property, a small building, debt they couldn't pay, notes that were due. The Lord spoke to Barbie and me, to be pastor. We started that Sunday. We had absolutely nothing. The church couldn't even pay me. All I got was money for gas. Barbie worked full time and supported us. That church began to grow from the very first Sunday we opened. Every Sunday, every Sunday, we had new people coming into the church. It was amazing what we saw over the 10 years that we were there. 
the growth of that church, the influence. We started with nothing. The first offering I took after the first three months was to raise enough money to pay interest on the notes of the bank so the bank didn't foreclose and take the property. Didn't pay one penny of principal. Raised an entire offering beyond anything I thought we were capable of doing. To this day, I still don't know how that small group of people raised that amount of money, thousands of dollars. God supernaturally did something. Why? He put me in a situation in ministry where I had to learn to trust him because without his miracle provision, there's no way anything could have been done. And I used to go as that church was growing and I'd drive the car and park out in the gravel parking lot. When we were able to expand, we put in a larger gravel parking lot. And I would park my car there at night, look up at the building. And I used to pray this prayer, Lord, you've got mortgages at the bank and a ministry to provide for. And I say, Lord, I suggest that you pay your bills to keep your good name in this community. You see, the psalmist said, he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, not our name's sake. I was learning to trust God when I would feel anxious and afraid about how we were going to provide, how we were going to build a church, how we were going to pay the bills. I would drive over to that property and I would give my worry to God and I would put myself in a place of utter dependency on him. And God at time will let you go through a problem. You'll face an opportunity, a challenge. It was a great opportunity for Barbie and me in ministry. But the only way that church grew and experienced the amazing growth that it experienced was because I learned to trust God. And the reason for that is when I came to Mount Perrin to pastor. And now after the years I've been here and all that we have seen, I started with 12 people. I pastored nearly 13,000 a day. But the same lesson I learned, I don't depend on myself, the money, the resources. It's by faith. And if you will learn to do everything you can do, use your talent, your gift, work hard, I believe in all that. But when you're in a situation that's bigger than you, don't panic. Trust God. Lord, increase our faith. You'll see amazing things in your life, if you will. Now, second of all, people can increase your faith. So there are two lessons that I want to teach today about how people can build your faith. God can increase your faith. And one of the ways is to put you in a situation that stretches you to the point that you're now going to exercise that faith. The second is that people can increase your faith. So the two points I want to make, number one, surround yourself with people of great faith. And number two, stay away from people without faith. Surround yourself with people of great faith. You know, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, the scripture says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Now, the writer of Hebrews is talking about all these great people in Old Testament times who live by faith, and they're living examples to us. They're a cloud of witnesses, and we can learn from their experiences with God. But just as you can surround yourself with biblical stories of great people, you can also surround yourself with people in the present, not just people in the past, but people in the present. Surround yourself with people of great faith, who pray in faith, who live by faith, who encourage you in your faith, because they'll help increase your faith. But then second of all, stay away from people without faith, people that attack your faith. People that ridicule your faith. We're living in a secular culture that more and more is antagonistic to faith in God. Faith is ridiculed. Prayer is ridiculed by many people. Don't feed your mind on that. Stay away from the news media, entertainment, and social media that attacks your faith and intentionally tries to destroy your faith. It's one thing for somebody not to have much faith. It's another thing for them to attack a person's faith. Don't feed your mind and your spirit on those things. You want to grow your faith. You want to increase your faith. And you can't do that if you allow your mind to be filled constantly with attacks against your faith. The new word is science. You'll hear that more and more. I pick, I pick that up everywhere. If somebody wants to legitimize anything they think, they'll just say it's science, whether it is or not. 
Science is wonderful, it's real, but most of the things I hear people call science is not science, it's skepticism. There's a big difference. The scientific method is a specific method of observing data, drawing conclusions, and forming analysis. You'll hear science and data, science. A lot of what you're hearing is skepticism. If it's true science, it'll stand up under scrutiny. Don't allow your mind to be attacked by people's lack of faith, by their effort to destroy faith. God created you with a wonderful gift of faith. Why surround yourself with doubt? You know, doubt has never done one good thing in this world. There are no great accomplishments or achievements or discoveries in the history of the world by doubters. Not one. Every great accomplishment, every great achievement, even in human achievements, scientific discoveries, are because people believed. Faith is a great, victorious way to live. Doubt is a sad, depressed, a hopeless and defeated way to live. And God didn't create us to live like that. He created us with a measure of faith. Use that measure of faith. Grow that measure of faith. You'll find yourself to be victorious in life. One day Jesus was going through a town according to a beautiful story found in Mark the fifth chapter. He got through a crowd and there was a man named Jairus who was the leader of a Jewish synagogue. And he came to Jesus. He'd heard of Jesus. Perhaps he'd met Jesus. But his little girl, 12-year-old girl, was at home, critically ill, terminally ill. And he said, Lord, come, come heal my daughter. And Jesus started on his way to the home of Jairus. About that time, a man from Jairus' home came and told Jairus, whispered in his ear, he said, don't disturb Jesus any longer. Your daughter just passed away. His heart sank in such depression. Jesus heard what the man said to Jairus, but Jesus looked at Jairus and said, Jairus, fear not, only believe. Four words that'll change your life from God, from Christ. Fear not, only believe. Every time your heart gives way, you hear the Lord say to you, fear not, only believe. He kept going with Jairus to his home, and when he arrived there, people were wailing and weeping, crying hysterically. He goes into the house, and he says to the people that were there, why all this weeping and wailing? The child isn't dead. She's only asleep. And the Bible said they laughed at him. Think of that. They went from mourning over the loss of a little girl to laughing at his faith. They were laughing at his faith. So Jesus took only three of the disciples, Peter, James, and John, and the little girl's parents. And the Bible says in Mark 5, verse 40, he put everyone else out of the house. He put all the doubters and all the scoffers out of the house. And in that moment with the child's parents and Peter, James, and John, he spoke to that little girl and said, little girl, I say to you, get up. And the little girl immediately woke up and they prepared a meal for her. He put the doubters and the skeptics out of the house. And you need to put the voice of doubt, skepticism out of your mind. The truth of God will set you free. Your faith is anchored, yes, in God, in true science, because science comes from God. Walk by faith, not by sight. You'll see tremendous victory in your life. I talked with a woman recently who had cancer, went through a serious battle. She went, had to go for surgery, and now she's completely restored and healed of that. But she told me when she first got diagnosed and she had that surgery, she decided not to tell some of her friends and some of her family members. She didn't want them to know because she said they would attack my faith. They'd be full of fear. They'd be full of panic. They'd get me worried. I wanted to surround myself, she said, with people of faith. She had members of her own family. They didn't know she had surgery until it was over and she was better. She had the victory and then she shared the victory because she didn't want people 
tearing down her faith. She was a woman of faith and great faith. Surround yourself with people of great faith and protect yourself from people who intentionally attack and seek to destroy that amazing gift of faith that God has given you. So God increases our faith, and people can increase their faith. And finally, you can increase your own faith. You say, how can I increase my faith? By using it. Pray in faith. Take a risk by faith and stop being paralyzed by your fears. When you face a great challenge, don't back down from it. Don't tell yourself you don't have enough talent and ability. Take the job opportunity. Take the new ministry position. Take the challenge. Run the risk. Put your faith to work. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 22, do not merely listen to the word of God and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. The older English version of the King James puts it this way, be doers of the word, not hearers only. And then James goes on in James chapter 2, verse 26 to say, faith without works is dead. Put it to work. Put your faith to work. And you'll see extraordinary miracles, extraordinary blessings. You'll think, see things that you thought were impossible suddenly become possible in your life. You know, your gift of faith can be such a blessing and an encouragement to others. Right now, people are in such panic and worry and anxiety. I saw the other day that there's a 30% of all young people and teenagers right now, they're, they're bound in anxiety and depression, just at spiking the rates of it. In fact, young people in America today, they said right now are the most miserable of any people group of any category because of this crisis. And you know, you and I can step into those situations, into our lives of our family and our friends and our community. If we will be people of faith, we can lift them out of that anxiety and out of that depression. You are a minister of faith in God. I close with this story. The Apostle Paul gives us an example of what we need to do in the storm we're all going through right now. In Acts 27, we read the story of him on a ship. He was going to Rome as a prisoner to testify before the emperor. There's a great storm that came up for days and days. They threw everything overboard, all the, the boat supplies, the food supplies, just hoping the, the ship wouldn't sink. And then the Lord spoke to Paul one night. And the next morning, he stands up on the deck of that ship, 276 men aboard a Roman ship. And he made this statement. He said, last night, the angel of the Lord stood by me, the God whom I serve, and he told me that I would testify before the emperor and that not one of you would be lost. And then he made this statement to those men who were frightened, who believed that they were going to perish at sea. Acts 26, 25, he said, so men, keep up your courage, for I have faith in God that it will be just like he told me. And right now, you can be just like Paul the Apostle in your family, in your community, with your friends, on social media. You can be just like Paul, a champion of faith in a world of fear. You too can stand up and say, family, friends, keep up your courage, for I have faith in God. Join me in prayer today. Lord, we pray like the disciples increase our faith. And I pray, Lord, in faith for every person watching today that you will cause them to grow in grace and knowledge and strength. Make them a champion of faith that they can be victorious in their personal life and be a minister of faith to others. In Jesus' name.